pain is the ultimate limiter to, to movement, right? So a lot of uh, younger therapists, they make the mistake when someone comes in and they're in an acute amount of pain, they have all of these ideas. I want to create space. I want to create capsule space. I want workspace. I want mobility. I want strength. I want this. I want that. So they end up aggressively treating the person, prescribing a whole bunch of exercises. And um, that's, that's a, a rookie mistake. If someone's in a state of pain, uh, it's the job of the therapist to begin to deal, if there's pain, if there's inflammation, these things supersede, especially acutely, supersede these goals. So the idea there would be to try to limit their pain. How do you limit their pain? Uh, well, pain science tells us that the majority of us limiting their pain is education-based, it's activation-based. But to say that someone comes in with an acutely painful shoulder, and we're going to say, just, just ignore the pain, go and do what you were doing before. I don't agree with that. There are ways to reduce pain levels, even symptomatically. Uh, and those symptomatic results allow the person to move more. And the fact that they can move more really is the therapy. Uh, so in acute cases of, of, of spasm, you know, a lot of times you can't even get to the joint to assess it. A lot of times you just have to deal with this acute spasming so that the joint presents itself to you and then you can subsequently determine what's going on with the joint. Is that causing the spasm to occur? But you also bring up a good point of the difference between neurological tightening and mechanical tension and how we treat it differently. So if I'm assessing someone's joint, just because a muscle's tight does not um, give you enough information for you to conclude I should rub it or I should drive my elbow into it, or I should take a metal object and start scraping at it. Uh, a muscle being tight doesn't, doesn't tell you uh, the, the, the histopathology as to why it's tight. And if you don't understand the histology of the pathology, you really shouldn't be treating it. So if somebody says my traps are tight, my hamstrings are tight, it doesn't mean just randomly stretch them. It doesn't mean just randomly get them crushed on a foam roller because the question has to become, well, why are they tight? or what's the actual finding. And there's a difference between my muscles neurologically tight versus in this area of the muscle, I feel some aberrant tension. If there's aberrant tension in this area of the muscle, an FR practitioner will put tension into that area and then use movements to try to, in time, reorganize that disorganization in the connective tissue. But if you're assessing a tissue, and the entire muscle is tight, or the entire muscle's reactive, so let's say I, I go to extend the arm and the whole bicep contracts, that's a, a neurologically generated tightness. And if you go ahead to try to rub that neurological tightness, you can rub a, a neurologically tight muscles until your thumb is a nut, and you're not gonna, you're not gonna actually change the problem. Just like you can take someone who has capsular restriction, which is signaling to the brain to tighten the muscles, you can rub those muscles for as long as you want. As long as that capsule is not working and as long as that signal is aberrant, that exact same signal is gonna tell you to tighten that muscle again. So to therapists, they have to be able to differentiate, is this mechanical tension caused by disorganization of tissue or is this neurologically tight? Once again, in, in, in the FRS system, functional range systems, we specifically take time uh, to teach the therapist how to tell the difference 